powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Now, live from inside the Matt Black Kia Studios, it's Football at Four. Football at Four, powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Latest episode I was listening to this morning on my ride in to the station. Josh Hennig filling in for Mike Yell alongside Danny Ryan here on the Sports Bash on 97.3 ESPN. NFL insider Adam Kaplan is back for another edition of Football and Four. Don't forget you can like, subscribe, and download the Inside the Birds podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Adam, Merry Christmas. Welcome back in. How are you doing today? Josh, hop, happy holidays to you and your listeners here on 97.3 and Doing well. Look, it it it, uh, it was an interesting game. No, nevertheless, it looked like it could be a blowout. And then a series of gas were one of them. Uh, it's almost hard to understand the Zacchaeus running into Boston Scott. Although they, it it was a what they call a dual uh, kickoff return situation where they had two guys uh, back to return it, and Zacchaeus uh, got pushed into uh, to uh, Scott. But the overall, the offense is really really good. 465 yards of offense, folks. I mean, that, that's, that's really, really strong. You have to feel good about that. Seven scoring drives, up from three from the previous week. Sure, you like to, to get it, score a touchdown every single drive you have, but it's, it's hard to go seven for seven. That would have been 49 points, but I digress. So, Adam, let's start on the offensive side because this is the first time they've scored over 21 points in three weeks. 465 yards, as you mentioned, Marriage between the pass and the run game. Eagle fans are, are like, finally we get some running of DeAndre Swift. So talk about the balance of the offense yesterday. Yeah, I, I put that in my notes. Look, I'm I'm not someone who really believes in balance based on the coaches that I've talked to for 20-some-odd years. Uh, balance is a sort of a, a, a media myth. There's really there's not a lot of truth to it, to be honest with you. It's It'll look like balance at the end of the game sometimes when the Eagles or any team runs a lot. It's generally, you know, you pass more in the first half, you get a lead, then you run more. In the second half, you get a big lead, and then it looks like you're balanced. So it's – the Eagles, Josh, what I, I should explain a little bit further, and this was explained to me privately, and I'll just use this. And this is the best way to describe the Eagles and why they'll always be a passing team, uh, for the most part. Look at the personnel. Dallas Goddard, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, they're not there to run the football. That's never going to be the case with these guys there, nor should they be. Yes, there are times to run the football. Yes – I'm with some of those people. Sometimes when they run the ball a little bit well and they don't stay with it, I, I, I scratch my head a little bit sometimes, but I totally get it. They're going to win most weeks, Josh, by throwing the football, and they threw it really well. Hertz has not played this well in weeks as we, we get into that. Very decisive. I, I like the game plan. I, I, I like the f- formationally. They, got, they, they scheme guys open better. Uh, that was for sure. A.J. Brown had a very good game. Devontae Smith on the crosser for, for the touchdown. Uh, that was a scheme play. That was a play where it, it was really to Hurts there to be decisive, and they, he did a good job there, and I, I like that. The, the also personnel-wise, they went heavy 12 personnel, which is not usually what they do, uh, but they did in this game. That was interesting. Now doubt they're, they're pretty healthy on offense for the most part. They did that. So... Look, they, 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 it's interesting. They had a big lead, Josh, and obviously they dominated time of possession. They had, they had a lot of plays in the game. They threw it a ton, and they ran it a ton. It, it, was, it was one of those games where it seemed like they kind of owned, they owned the Giants, and if they didn't, if they didn't have the, the, uh, the Goddard falling down, which resulted in a pick six, and the craziness of that opening kickoff to the second half of, of the, the turnover, it's just one of those games where you go, okay, this is what the Eagle fans probably thought. Although I know in social media they're on the Eagles, they're not being as good and all this. Folks, it's never easy to win the National Football League. I know the Giants aren't very good. But the offense, at least for one week, was back on track. How much of the offense being back on track, Adam, had to do with the pass protection? Because it seemed like for a few weeks there, pass protection was inconsistent. It was sloppy at times. You know, I know Jason Kelsey has complained on his podcast about you know him missing his assignments at times. So, how was the pass protection in tune with the offense? You know, it was for the most part, Josh. It was very good. For, for you know, the, the just the the one one watch that I had of it, 
and the time that he that Hertz had to throw, it, it was really good. There's no question about it. And you know that the Giants have a high blitz percentage, and the Eagles handled it really well. Uh, that was a really good sign. In fact, w- when you looked at it, um, Dexter Lawrence was not the factor that most people probably thought he would be. Now, Lawrence came in with a hamstring injury, and that may have contributed to the reason why that Lawrence, uh, Dexter Lawrence was not the factor that some people thought he would be, one of the best defensive linemen in football. Their best defensive player, I thought the Eagles really handled him well. They have to feel good about that. Uh, I, I, and, again, the, the coaches clearly defined stuff for Hurts. The, the crosser for, to Smith was clearly defined, and he did a good job of, of getting it there. And Hurts, by the way, was only hit three times. That's a really good sign. Avoided the rush when he had to. And this, this, was a, this is a bounce-back game for Hurts in a big way. But, I, you know, people want to take away from it because of who they played. Hurts and the Eagles don't control that. They only control how they play, and they play pretty well offensively. You mentioned about the the Hurts throw to Smith. So how much of that has to do with this team better utilizing the talent they have on the field? You know, Josh and, and Nick Sirianni talked about this. They're running the same, same scheme in mostly the same place as last season. But it's, it's, the, it's, it's also adjusting the play design a little bit. Clearly defining, defining it means this. It's like, okay, the quarterback drops back. They're going to they're gonna have the pass target scream across his face where it says, okay, throw the ball here. That's being clearly defined. They did a good job of doing that. And Hurts, by the way, did a very good job of executing. So it, it, you're not going to just – you know, one of the things that, that I complain about is the lack of formation variation, the lack, the, 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 the lack of differenti- differentiation of personnel, getting Swift involved in the pass game. Well, Swift is great in, this, in the run game. They still haven't done that. Um, getting the backs more involved in the pass game, still not what we thought it would be, though it was somewhat early in the season, clearly not now. Uh, not pre-snap motion. We, we ver- see very little of it. I don't know if Sirianni doesn't believe in it. Well, when you're trying to get your offense going sometimes, you kind of need that. I know he's against that, but it's not like they're all of a sudden running a bunch of different plays. That's not going to happen. You have the plays that you put in for the season, and that's what you run. That's that's in your playbook. Now you could pick different plays from your playbook, uh, but you know the early word is look. The, the execution was really good. It all lined up well. And here's the thing, Josh. This is the team that the Eagles have owned for years under Sirianni and obviously Doug Peterson. They knew what they were getting under this this defense coordinator, Wink Martindale, and. and they executed just a good job of game planning. Talk with NFL insider Adam Kaplan from the Inside the Birds podcast, InsideTheBirds.com, at Kaplan NFL on the Twitter X platform. Speaking of executing, if we take away that Adoree Jackson touchdown by the defense, Adam, the Eagles defense looked a little better. Yeah, they allowed the Giants to get back into it, but overall, they only allowed, what was it, 18 points as a defense. Yeah, yeah look. You say only 18 points, really, going against this team that shouldn't have gotten 10. You're probably a little bit concerned about that. And, and look, we know that Matt Patricia's history, prior to joining the Eagles and when he's been a play caller with the, with the Lions and the Patriots, is he doesn't blitz much. He plays what's called a coverage-based defense. They wanna, they're going to they're gonna muddy the looks. They're going to make the quarterback call on the football, and you hope that your line gets there. Um, that that that's the thing. They only had the one sack. They hit the giant quarterback six times. They got some pressure, but it's not. Listen, Josh. We have to all have to accept this is not even close to last year's defense. Right. They're down six starters, five from last season, and Maddox. Who the hope is he'll be ready this week. I mean, he's he's physically recovered. He he did very well in practice last week, but it's a conditioning issue. He's been out for three and a half months. But the bottom line is, Josh, the defense was not going to be the same. The more people are willing to accept that, the less stress they'll have. Because people seem to not, they seem to think like, okay, well, the Eagles got the Super Bowl last year that they're going to get there again. Well, you're not, it's not the same team. Not the same coaching staff, but what we had said on Inside the Birds to start the season was, Josh, the rest of the league is not as good. And that is completely true. It's just right. not. Look at the Niners last night. How about that? Yep. Yeah, the, the Niners game, and also the Cowboys the day before against yeah. the Dolphins. You know, it's, yeah. You look around the league, Adam. You could almost say that you have to grade with a curve at this point. I don't think it's mediocre. I don't think it's mediocrity. It's just that there are no elite teams. Eagles were absolutely elite last year. So were the Chiefs. 
Look at the drop-off of the Chiefs, Josh. Yes. Stunning. Uh, now, I thought the Raiders called it a very conservative game plan. They, they ran the ball well, but the problem is the Chiefs actually had a chance to, to win the game late, and they, they blew it. But bottom line is the Chiefs are not the same team, nor the Eagles. Eagles are clearly better. But it doesn't mean they can't get back to the Super Bowl. And by the way, they're very much in it, not only for the division, which right now they're a heavy favorite based on what you mentioned, Dallas. They're very much in it and have a decent chance to get the number one seed all of a sudden. So all is not lost. It, it's a week-to-week league, and the more we accept that, the more we will understand. Right now, you mentioned about the, the Cowboys and their loss, how that affects the Eagles and the NFC East. We know now the Eagles have multiple wins of the Cowboys. Don't, don't Eagles beat the Dolphins and the Bills. Cowboys lost to the Dolphins and the Bills. So, Adam, talk about the NFC East and the Eagles' chances for the one seed. Yeah, so basically the strength of victory, because Eagles split. The Eagles have the strength of victory. They also have common opponents. I don't want to say a lock. I mean, look, if they lose to the, if they lose to the Cardinals this week, I'd pull my, two, my toupee off. I mean, I just, it's just ridiculous. If they lose to the Cardinals, I'll be, it'll be the biggest embarrassment of Sirianni's coaching history here, because he's been a great head coach, by the way, really good. But that, they can't lose to the Cardinals. And the Giants are very, you know, look, Tyrod Teller, I would guess, is going to take over the starting job. He's always capable. But they should win those two games, and they would win the division. It's getting the number one seed right now, and th- there's the three-way tie, though the Niners have the tie, one of the tiebreakers. It's the, because they have it over the Eagles, as we know. But, and the Lions now at 11-4 to now, they've got a very tough game against the Cowboys uh, on Saturday on a short week. You know, they have to prove emotionally they can handle this, Josh. Let's not forget, the Lions have not been in this spot in over 30 years. You mentioned the Cardinals next week. I, I want to touch on those with you, Adam, because not just Jonathan Galling on the side, but Clay Harbor brought up a great point to you guys on the Inside the Birds pod where he talked about how look at what the Bears did with an inferior team, with a lesser offensive line, a lesser offense, and what they were able to do against the Cardinals. So if we're, a, if we're to project ahead to this game, if the Eagles play their game, they should beat Arizona, right? Yeah, now, now over the years, every once in a while, the Eagles have struggled a little bit against uh, what we call running quarterbacks. And Kyler Murray gave the Bears some fits. He made some plays with his legs on Sunday. So you just can't say, oh, well, there's just no way that the Cardinals can move the football. He, he's always capable. James Conner's a pretty good running back. Their secondary's pretty bad. We'll talk mm-hmm. more about this uh, on Inside the Birds tomorrow, and we'll start getting people ready uh, for the game. But the bottom line is it's a game the Eagles have to have. They know it. It's their last home game of the regular season. And now they're back in it for the number one seed. And I know that you know that some of the beat reporters, and they would know they're in the locker room all the time, say that the, there's some misery even when they win. They're not a happy team. Well, look, it's tough to get wins in the National Football League, and they've got to get back on track here. And they did. They got the win, and they got to get their minds right. Before I let you go, Adam, one more from the game. we got to touch on the special teams. Listen, <laughs> Elliot and Mann did their job for the most part yesterday, but one ridiculous moment at the beginning of the second half. I don't think I've ever seen that, Adam, where a guy literally runs into his own teammate, causes a fumble, and puts the other team basically in scoring range. My guess is, after that happened, is the reason why... That's, and I, it's Sirianni's call. He's the head coach. Uh, the reason why they, they, they just took the kneel down, which is the new adjustment to the rule, because right. they screwed it up so badly. That was, it, it was, I was kind of laughing, like, geez, the, I wonder who made that decision well, after that, because they, they <laughs> stopped. It had to be the head coach. It, it was, yeah, look, by the way, Jake Elliott was perfect again. He's yep. unbelievable. We could argue, I mean, Justin Tucker's going to go to the Hall of Fame, but uh, Jake Elliott is the second best kicker in the National Football League. Braden, man, what a signing he's been. Very underrated. He's done a really good job, almost 55 yards a punt. And then Britton Covey, the NFL's best punt returner. Give the Eagles credit for this one. Uh, I'm told that they actually considered drafting him last year, but they rightfully thought he wouldn't get drafted. And I, I can't remember now why they, they knew that, but I know they did a ton of work on him. They were on him. Give their area scout credit. Obviously, Harry Roseman, it's his decision in the end to sign the player. Britton Covey, they have the best punt returner. It, the, the, you, last year we called them the not so special teams. This year they're mostly special. Uh, does Covey have a chance for the Pro Bowl, Adam? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, 
I vote in two polls, one for the Pro Football Writers Association, which is the deepest and most detailed of, of all the awards. We, we vote on so many different categories. He has to be the punt returner, has to be. Now, obviously, for the Eagles, you're hoping that he won't be able to play in that because they'll be going deep in the playoffs. Absolutely, absolutely. Of course, more from the Inside the Birds podcast, Adam Kaplan at Kaplan NFL, the Inside the Birds podcast, dropping all week long. Just because yesterday was Christmas doesn't mean Jeff Mosher, Adam Kaplan, and all the team are not taking off at all this week. Inside the Birds podcast, wherever you get your podcast, like, subscribe, download, and give it that five-star review. Adam, great stuff today. Enjoy the rest of the week. You too. Thank you.